Hey, welcome back to Everyday Economics, a podcast that helps you learn about the economic world happening around you every day. I'm your host, Chris Krug, president of the 501c3 nonprofit Franklin News Foundation. Everyday Economics is a production of America's Talking Network. Check out all our great podcasts at americastalking.com. And joining me as always, my friend, my colleague, Dr. Orfe Devangi. He's a PhD economist. And just for the record, he is not a robot. He is not an avatar. He is not a figment of your imagination. He's a real economist. Hey, Dr. O, one of the things that's kind of sweeping the, the nation with regard to talk, chit chat, et cetera, et cetera, is the recent rise of the of the chat GPT uh, artificial intelligence. How do we even characterize this thing? Artificial learning being driven by by computer means. It's a chat bot is what I call it. I, you know, I grew up, you know, as a boy in fear of sharks because I saw Jaws when I was a kid. Terminator didn't affect me too much because I was a little bit older. But uh, going back and, you know, and watching 2001 uh, Space Odyssey, which I did not see when it came out because I was too young to see it when it came out. I was always afraid of uh, of Hal. Is there any reason to be afraid of Hal now as far as it goes with ChatGPT and AI and, and the robots that in theory are coming to take our jobs and perhaps more? Is there anything to fear? Well, I guess it depends, right? Like, what does the research say? So the research says that robots tend to make firms, businesses, and some workers more productive, but they also replace other workers who tend to perform routine tasks, right? Which totally makes sense, right? So like, if you're one of those robot builders, you're doing really well. If you're somebody who uses who needs to, uh, who doesn't necessarily do a routine task and need to, you know, really think about the problem and solve complex new problems, then you are safe. But if you're somebody who's, I don't know, moving widgets from A to B, you're more likely to get replaced by a robot. So a couple thoughts on that. Haven't we already, I mean, chat GPT is interesting, right? Because I mean, you know, you can ask it a question and you can ask it actually to do what, you know, with some like work, you know, like to produce something academic for you, produce, a, you know, a paper about X, Y, and Z. We've seen the outcomes of this and, and the inherent biases that exist. It's not clean, right? It doesn't feel ready for prime time to me. I mean, it seems really stilted and so nascent that it's surprising that it's out there in, in the universe. I mean, the the amount of things that, and regardless of whose platform it is, like there's not just one of these. Like oh, no, everybody's right. working on you something like You got Google like this. also has one. Microsoft is, chat. I guess Microsoft bought ChatGPT, right? It's ch- invested in ChatGPT. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of those coming out and they're going to get better over time. But right now, uh, you kind of have a parrot. You know, it's like, you know, repeating stuff. For the sake of repeating it, not really understanding or, or right, and so yes, we are not there yet. Uh, but but there's it's coming, and I think I, I was listening to another one of my favorite podcasts besides Everyday Economics, of course. You know, they were talking about the fact that humans need to. We are essentially teaching these these chatbots, whatever it is they know, and so we need to be if in order to differentiate ourselves from these. Uh, essentially parrots, we need to be ourselves, be more human. What does it mean to be human? It means to kind of color outside the lines sometime, you know, and it, it, it means, you know, you, you, in your writing and your way of doing things, you don't necessarily need to, to stick to this formula that they taught you at school, you know, like, you know, it, we we all learned a way to write from the way the teachers taught us to write in school. But like, you need to be a little bit more human and be yourself and color outside the lines, right? And that's the thing that the robots can't figure out. Well, let me ask you this question. So, so you know, I mean, Henry Ford, you know, the way that he birthed his company and really grew it, you know, was around the sort of not the invention, but the perfection of the assembly line. Right? And that changed the way that America built cars. And that we have over the course of our history as an as an industrialized nation developed efficiencies by using machines. And and I mean, of course, that, you know, that made its way across the transom, you know, into computers and, you know, IBM, you know, one of the companies at the at the forefront and Hewlett Packard, of course, took computers that would be the size of a house. And they were able to, you know, to, to shrink them down and to increase their power at the at the same time, the computing power at the same time. When you look at Chat GPT, and I'm going to ask you to put on your futurist hat right now. I mean, clearly innovation and automation have made manufacturing, 
I don't know if I would say better. Well, more productive for sure. Certainly more productive. So what do you think is the future of, of, of something like chat GPT? What might we be able to do with it if we harnessed its powers for good and prevented ourselves from creating a Skynet-like environment from the Terminator? I think there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of good that comes, that could come from this. I mean, you mentioned Ford, look, from, from, you know, U.S. robotics technology has increased tremendously. Even since, you know, you know, since the 90s, 90s, you know, fourfold increase in the stock of industrial robots in the U.S. and Western Europe between 1993 and 2007. That's a lot, right? Uh, it amounts to about one new robot per thousand workers in the U.S., right? So the robots are coming. The machines are coming. <laughs> and so we need to be aware of that. What's interesting is that the research shows that it did reduce employment for, for some Right. Uh, those who were exposed to these robots that were performing routine tasks. I mentioned that when it comes to chat, when it comes to those chatbots, I, th- I think they're designed to help us. They're designed to help. It, it would be nice if I'm starting a problem from scratch and I don't have to start from scratch and I don't have to open 50 tabs on my Google because I have one colleague, a robot, who can help me get the answer to my question by s- going through the entire state of knowledge up until this day, and giving me a few bullet points to start my research from, right? Wouldn't that be nice? And I think, I think kind of that's where this thing should be headed, you know, that we could, we could innovate faster because we don't have to go through the entire literature anymore. And we have an assistant who is really competent and can go through the literature and explain it for us and give us a few bullet points to start from. Uh, that's my hope for that's my hope for uh, this type of uh, AI. I, I appreciate those thoughts, and I, I would agree with that. I mean, if, if if we could simplify some of the core basic tasks and we're able to begin with the things that we know to be true, that would be easily verifiable through a device such as that, that would be wonderful. Journalistically, oh boy, I am very very <laughs> concerned about about what could happen with you know with Chat GPT in the journalistic space. We are talking about it internally at Franklin News Foundation. We're not using it. Good for yeah. you. I mean, if, if you asked Chad, I saw an article yesterday. If you asked Chad GPT about uh, the Fed decision yesterday, it just spit out a bunch of random stuff. It, it didn't know that the Fed had been hiking rates for a year, for example. Maybe some key data points missing from that information, yeah? A lot is missing still. And it still doesn't really understand what's really going on. And, and and the Fed's objectives and how the Fed makes those types of decisions. And, you know, right? So, so much knowledge and need to be thought so much still. Yeah, we're not there yet. I think I think reporters are safe. <laughs> I'll let them know. For Orfei Divangi, this has been Chris Krug. Subscribe to Everyday Economics and dozens of other quality podcasts at americastalking.com. Freedom and liberty are important to all of us. If you're looking for civil, intellectual conversations with those shaping the future of freedom, try the Future of Freedom podcast with me, Scott Bertram. We speak with leaders across the country in the greater conservative and libertarian movements. In-depth conversations about where the next intellectual battles will happen across the country. It's the Future of Freedom podcast. Find it at americastalking.com or wherever you get your podcasts.